Welcome to Safety and Health in Engineering. My name is Hafiz and I will guide you through Unit 1, which is Introduction to Occupational Safety and Health Legislation. In this unit, we will talk about introduction and the history of safety and health practice in Malaysia. We will also discuss about the concept of occupational safety and health. And then, we are going to discuss about the importance of workplace safety, followed by the legislative framework. And finally, we will learn about the roles of safety and health organizations in Malaysia. Let's start with what is Occupational Safety and Health, also known as OSH. OSH means providing a working environment which is conducive to safety and health of the workers. Reasonable precautionary steps are taken to ensure that the workers are safe and prevented from any health hazards due to work activities. Safer workplace will help to improve productivity reduce costs, better performance and profitability. When it comes to history of OSH in Malaysia, there are five eras of safety and health development in Malaysia. The first one being the steam boiler safety, which is before the year 1914. Next is the machinery safety, which is 1914 until 1952, followed by the industrial safety, which is 1953 until 1967, and then industrial safety and hygiene, which is 1970 until 1994. And finally, the occupational safety and health era, which is the year 1994 onwards until now. Let's start with the steam boiler safety era before 1914. In the year 1878, William Given was elected as machine inspector to inspect the steam boilers used in most tin mines. In the 1890s, the Pera state government elected personnel with expertise in steam boilers and gave them each a license as a boiler surveyor. In 1892, there were 83 steam boilers used in Pera. Steam boiler enactments at the time were state-oriented as each of the four allied Malay states, which is Pera, Selangor, Pahang and Negris Milan, used different steam boiler laws. The first steam boiler law of Malaysia is believed to have been legislated in Selangor, the Selangor Boiler Enactment, 1892. Meanwhile, in Perak, the first steam boiler law was enforced in 1903. Beginning in 1908, the allied Malay states had a uniform steam boiler legislation that was enforced by boiler inspectors. And then came the machinery safety era. On the 1st of January of 1914, all steam boiler enactments were replaced with the machinery enactment 1913. Under it, the inspector not only inspected steam boilers but also machinery including internal combustion engines, water turbines, etc. Job title of inspector of boilers are changed to inspector of machinery and assistant inspector of machinery. In 1932, enactment 1913 is replaced by Machinery Enactment 1932. Inspection, Registration and Installation Inspection was enforced. And then Industrial Safety Era. All machinery enactments before 1953 were abolished and replaced with Machinery Ordinance 1953. Main provisions of the ordinance were as follows. Requirement to establish a board of inspectors to conduct inspections and award certificates of fitness. Machinery not to be operated without certificates of approval. Machines must be inspected from time to time. All accidents must be reported and investigated. On top of that, no person has the right to physically hurt another person by operating a machine. Machinery that doesn't fulfill regulations are not to be sold, borrowed or rented. And finally, an inspector has the authority to enter a site and stop any unsafe machinery. And then came the Industrial Safety and Hygiene Era. In 1967, Factory and Machinery Act, FMA, was approved. In 1970, FMA and eight regulations under the Act was enforced. The Machinery Ordinance 1953 was abolished and the Machinery Department was changed to Factory and Machinery Department. This was enforced in Peninsular Malaysia only until 1980 when it was enforced in Sabah and Sarawak as well. Finally came the Occupational Safety and Health Era. Occupational Safety and Health Act, also known as OSHA, was enacted in 1994 
due to shortcomings of the FMA 1967 which covered OSH in some industries only. FMA 1967 covered 24% of the total nation's workforce in the country, while OSHA 1994 covers 90%, excluding people working on ships and armed forces. The purpose of OSHA 1994 is to promote and encourage occupational safety and health awareness among workers and to create organisations with effective safety and health measures. The Act contains 15 sections supersedes any conflict in existing OSH laws such as FMA 1967. That's it for this time. In the next topic, we will go and talk about the concept of occupational safety and health. See you next time.